Hello, good evening. Tonight is um, the 28th of November, 2022. Uh, we are uh, currently getting ready to, um, to read and learn um, about investing in a few. I found this uh, material on uh, discipleship.org. This is a really cool um, website. The title of this uh, book is called Giving Your Life to What Matters Most by Craig Etheridge. Uh, my name is Abaya Hava. Um, I um, am a uh, disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, I too have a uh, discipleship ministry that the Lord just gave me called Please Disciple Me dot com. Um, so I am a, a new disciple of Jesus Christ for many years. I, I was a Christian, um, but I'm, I'm learning, uh, what being a disciple truly means and is, um, many years I, I, you know, I won people to the Lord and I, I failed to disciple them. I just, I would win them to the Lord. I thought that's what it, what we had to do and. You know, it's it's a part of it's a part of the process. It's a part of the journey. Um, but I just think where I'm at right now in my life, I'm I'm ready to disciple other uh, men uh, that um, would allow me the opportunity to do that. Um, and the best way I know how right now is uh, to show myself approved. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and I, like I said, I found this information on. Uh, on the website called uh, disciple.org, discipleship.org. Um, so they offer there a lot of uh, free ebooks on discipleship, which I'm going to take advantage of. <laughs> and uh, those of you people out there that uh, discipleship.org, I just want to thank you for the material, for the free material, um, and for being um, being awesome as as far as offering. This free discipleship material to to us that are that are coming up disciples and uh, so with that being said uh, I want to say thank you again to the ministry uh, discipleship.org thank you so much okay so it says here um, imagine a day when disciple making is the norm for the local church everyday Christians engage in relationships with people inside and out the church so they that can show the love of Jesus and help people to trust and follow him. Churches are known as disciple-making places where Jesus-like people are created. And pastors are evaluated by the people they raise up and the disciple-makers they have made in the Spirit's power. Jesus' message and Jesus' methods dominate. If this reason resonates with you, you can join 1,500 people who are serious about making disciples at the nation, our National Disciple Making Forum. Um, before we get started, I, um, I want to reiterate on what I had said just a few minutes ago about, um, uh, you know, for years I, I was kind of a, a pew, pew warmer, I guess they'd call it, <laughs> which is a good thing. Uh, it's it's great to go to church. It's great to have accountability and go to church. And the Bible says not to forsake the assembly of God. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times in church, we're taught to just kind of get in and get out, get the message, go there and kind of just drop off our sins and throughout the week and all the, the, uh, um, all the, uh, Ickiness, I guess you can call it that we that we uh, that we caught during the week, and um, what that is is uh, it's not really condemnation. It's 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 a good thing. It's it's basically what it is. It's you're being convicted of your sin, which is a great thing. Um, but the more we um, allow God to mold and shape us, uh, and, and and to be corrected in love. Um, it's going to get you're going to want to do different and greater things for God and this is a um, an opportunity for 
for for me and for those who are um, interested in doing more for God uh, to actually be, go out and make disciples instead of just be, being a disciple all of our lives. You know, it's one thing to be a disciple and it's another thing to make disciples, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, even though the Bible says that Paul plants in Apollos waters and only God gives the increase, well, um, you know, I think with the more God in us, the more we can also help in the increased process um, in other people's lives. Uh, so what that means to me is, is uh, I guess, you know, it, it's a lot of people get discouraged because they would sow into someone's life and, um, you know, I guess they wouldn't see the fruit. Like, I mean, all the people that I've, uh, I've won to the Lord over the years and and I, I wasn't really necessarily able to see the fruit or the process of the fruit in their lives, but um, I have seen a lot of, I've heard of a lot of testimonies of people that I brought to the Lord that are, that are now having, you know, big ministries and doing big things for the Lord, which is a great thing. But more importantly, I think uh, being able to see um, and grow uh, and watch your disciple grow is just a, is it's just a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's like you know, watching your plant grow. That you're, that you, that you would. Uh, if, if those of you who who are into horticulture and love, uh, you know, plants and or fruit or vegetables, growing your own stuff, or um, you know, anybody that, that knows anything about um, about about growing growing trees or or um, fruit or vegetables, like I said. You know that it's 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 really cool seeing it form from nothing to something that you could actually that's tangible that you could touch and <laughs> and, and eat eventually, right? Um, so you know that's that's what God says is he his 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 gospel message is um, has a lot to do with uh, with with harvesting harvesting. He he wants he likes to harvest souls. So um, so this. Uh, without further ado, I uh, want to stop yapping <laughs> and get uh, get focused on the contents here that was in front of us. Um, introduction says my journey of spiritual investment. So we're gonna I'm gonna today right now I'm gonna read um, just this here and then cut it and then uh, upload it uh, on the channel YouTube channel on the playlist. Eventually I'll get through all these um, different chapters uh and part one and two it looks like there's how many parts are there in this book one two there's three 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 parts so um the first one is uh introduction my journey of spiritual investment chapter one uh, is is the goal chapter two is the end product part one how to identify disciples chapter three are they devoted to christ chapter four are they developing in character? Chapter five, are they deployed into the world? Part two, how to make disciples. Um, chapter six, make disciples like Jesus. Chapter seven, choose disciples wisely. Um, chapter eight, cast the vision. Chapter nine, launch a group. Um, part three, how to multiply disciples. Chapter 10, Make time for what matters most. Chapter 11, know the Spirit's role. Chapter 12, multiply your life. So this is a great um, beginning beginner's book for not only for me, but for those of you who are um, interested in, in going to follow along in this book. Uh, I really would like to hear your, um, uh, your comments um, at the end of the videos. I think I since they're going to be up on YouTube, you could uh, you can um, comment while I'm reading. You know, you could comment different things and things of that nature too. So, uh, without further ado, um, I will begin the introduction. Uh, my journey of spiritual investment. Okay, so the content of this book comes from how God used various just disciple makers to invest in me. I am amazed at how God has brought great 
people to spiritually invest in me over the years, including my parents who first spoke the gospel over me and helped me to come to faith in Jesus. I had youth pastors who poured their lives into mine and spent endless hours answering my questions and teaching me to read and love God's word. In college, a retired businessman reached out to me and welcomed me into his home, where along with other college students, I learned what it meant to follow Jesus on a secular college campus. While in seminary, God brought an older man that stood about five feet, two inches, named Cecil, who taught me how to pray. Then there was a former Olympic wrestler named Dave, who gave me a passion for disciple making. While pastoring my first church, God planted three professional executives in my life who taught me how to share the gospel and train businessmen to walk with God. Later, I'm sorry, then later God brought strategists like Bill Hall and Dan Spader into my life, each of whom instilled in me a passion and a vision for making disciples the way Jesus did through the local church. And those of you who, um, those of you who, uh, who are, are following along with me, uh, this Bill Bill Hull uh, man that they're speaking of, I don't, I haven't, I haven't heard of Dan Spader yet. Um, I am going to look him up, but I have looked up Bill Hull actually. He's the one that. Um, that I found online before I even found uh, discipleship.org. Uh, I watched a lot of his videos and, well, not a lot, a few of them so far, and I really like what he, what he talks about. He's he's a man of a man of, of God, and he's a man of no compromise, a man who walks in integrity. I could tell um, the Spirit bears witness in my heart that this man is a, uh, is a uh, pioneer, <laughs> discipleship maker, <laughs> And uh, it would be an honor and privilege to meet with him one day, uh, if the Lord would will that. Um, so anyhow, okay, so Bill Hall and Dan Spader into my life, uh, each of whom instilled in me a passion and a vision for making disciples the way Jesus did through the local church. Thinking about these men, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. Each one shaped my life and their influence continues to impact me to this day. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, I'm, that's what we're supposed to do as, as disciples. Is we're supposed to, uh, you know, shape, help shape and influence, uh, and impact shape, influence, and impact the lives of others as as disciples. Um, I'm convinced that life changes. That life change happens when one believer invests in another person to help them walk with God reach their world and invest in a few. I'm sure that when you reflect on your spiritual journey, you could list people who have had an incredible impact on your life too. That's how God works. He works through one life, touching another life, and that life through yet touching in another life. That's God's plan to change the world that's investing in a few. Over the years, I've noticed that many Christ followers have a desire to make a spiritual investment in others, but they don't take action to do that. Many simply don't know what to do, and others aren't sure they are really qualified to make such an investment. For some others, they simply don't believe that God could use them in such a significant way. If those described you at all, I want you to read this next sentence slowly and think about its meaning for you. God has already given you everything you need to begin a movement that can change the world. Do you find that hard to believe? Then keep reading. This reveals Jesus' call to make disciples. By reading this book, you will learn the secret to making a lasting impact on the lives of others who will in turn do the same. You will discover some field-tested principles and practices to help you make disciples to the ends of the world. It is my hope that this book inspires you to fulfill Jesus' great commission in your lifetime. 
let's get started. So I'm going to cut this here. Um, if there is anybody out there that uh, is watching and listening and are listening to this, uh, these videos that I'm doing as narrating this book, um, and you haven't yet given your life to the Lord, um, I would. Uh, my prayer would be that you would um, that you would continue to listen and uh, watch these videos so that God would speak to your heart. Um, I know that these these all these books are intended to um, not only to help people that are already saved and born again to uh, to be basically doers of the word and uh, not just hearers only, because the Bible says that um, that you know that that we would be deceived if we're not doing what the word of God says we're to do. Um, that's why people make discipleship books <laughs> to, to help uh, understand uh, how to be a doer of the word and how to actually go out and, and make disciples like Jesus did. That's what the church was uh, intended for in the first place is to spread the, the message of the gospel uh, and not keep it um, not keep it hidden you know um, in our hearts. I mean we're supposed to have the, the, the word of God written on the tablet of our hearts but at the same time, um, we're supposed to be ready to give a hope for uh, an answer for the hope that is in us, uh, which is, uh, you know, the hope of life, a hope of peace in, G in Jesus. And he says that he has given us um, hope and a future, and he, he has not come to harm us. That was the enemy's, um, the enemy's uh, ploy was to come to steal, kill, and destroy uh, that which um, God has created and intended for good. Um, the devil would want to come and, and quench and and, uh, and steal your joy and peace. So if you don't have joy and peace or um, you've never given your life to the Lord, I, I would ask that, uh, you know, the Bible says that if you would confess him with your mouth um, and acknowledge him with your mouth and confess him, um, that, he, that he is in fact the son of God and he, he died on the cross for your sin and you believe in your heart that he was raised on the third day, um, then, then you can have you can have that free gift of eternal life, um, but there's there's a lot more to it than just uh, just believing, and um, and that's what disciples do. They teach they teach um, the simplicity of the gospel, yet um, that there is a it's a process. Uh, it's something that it's it's a lifelong process, um, a learning um, process. Uh, you, you know, it's not gonna. Our life is not. Your life is not gonna be uh, peachy king, as they would say, or, or um, you know, roses. <laughs> you know, um, it's quite the opposite. But God says that that, um, that the world would hate us for for they hated Him. Um, but the Bible teaches us how to overcome and uh, and how to love um, others as they would hate us. And it's not us that they hate in, in, initially, or um, even ever it's it's christ in us the hope of glory that they don't like and that they hate because um love convicts and uh it convicts sin and it, it exposes sin and it makes sin feel very uncomfortable so um if you are uh, in that category of uh somebody who would feel uh, convicted of sin and um and, and you want to you know give jesus a chance and uh give him a chance you know if that's what you want to do then um, you can, you know, I, I'd be glad to bring you through a prayer that, that it would begin your process uh, and your walk with Jesus. Um, so if you want to just uh, bow your head and repeat after me, just say, God, I surrender my life to you. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins. And I freely receive Jesus into my heart. Wash my sins away. Please, God. Teach me what it's like to be a son. Teach me how to live a life pleasing and worthy to you. Holy Spirit, 
I invite you into my heart. And I ask that you would lead me and guide me and give me the grace to overcome the grace to love others who might be unlovable, the grace to, to say no to the things that I would normally say yes to that would grieve you and that would block my block my um, my process from going forward. I want to walk with you, God. Teach me to walk with you. I want to hear from you. I want to talk with you and, and walk with you. Teach me how to how to be a disciple, a man or a woman that walks with you as Enoch did. I want to please you. I don't want to work for you. I don't want to walk with for you. I want to walk with you. Teach me to walk with you, God, in all things. Help me learn and teach me how to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for setting me free. And thank you for cleansing me of all unrighteousness. From this day forward, I will trust and I will trust in you and I'll lean not on my own understanding. But in all my ways, I will acknowledge you. And your word says that you will direct my paths if I meet the conditions the conditions that are written in the Bible to help me to be a, a disciple. Help me to bear fruit worthy of repentance. Help me to walk in integrity, in love, in forgiveness. Help me to show mercy to others. And grace to others. Thank you for this day. For your word says that today is the day of salvation. So thank you for my salvation, God. And thank you for sending other ministers into my life that are going to help me learn to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.